Praise the Lord. Are you happy with Jesus? Wonderful. I can see the excitement. Let's lift our hand towards heaven. He's worthy of our praise. Righteous Father, we say thank you. Holy Father, we say thank you. We bless the beauty of your holiness. It is because of you we are not consumed. The arrows that fly in the day, those that fly at night, the pestilence of darkness, you have not suffered us to have encounter with them because you have terminated them. This is the moment of truth. The time we've been waiting for. Father, send down your word that will make a difference in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us your season word that we turn our story around. Is there any blind person here? Let that person see in this service. Let the lame walk. Those looking for a change of status, let there be a turn around in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, we pray for the spirit of wisdom. We pray for revelation knowledge. Let our eyes of understanding be enlightened as your word come powerfully in this service. Put wisdom in our minds. Put understanding in our hearts. All this we ask in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Let's give Jesus a round of applause and a shout of hallelujah. As you take your seat in heavenly places, say to your neighbor on your left and your right, you are welcome to Living God Covenant Church. You'll be glad that you're in this service because God is said to bless you afresh in the mighty name of Jesus. Did you listen to that uh, testifier? He said he has entered adulthood. 18 years. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. 18 years in Nigeria is a very significant age. Because that is the age you can vote. 16 cannot vote. 17 cannot vote. How old are you supposed to vote? 18 years. So 18 is important. But nowadays we have kids that work at 16 years. 17 years they work. But the labor law, the age of working, what is the age? Who knows the age of working? Let's give Jesus a round of applause. 21 years is the age of working. That is the labor law. So all those that are working below 21 years. <laughs> we thank God for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Be enlightened with the light of the living. For his mighty power. Wonderful. That is your portion and portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Every one of us, we shall be enlightened with the light of the living. For his mighty power. Today we are continuing our series of understanding love. God's love with enlightenment. For his mighty power. And today's sermon is 877. For those following our series, Psalm 877. The topic is subtitled Overcoming the Enemies of God's Love. Say after me, Overcoming the Enemies of God's Love. Woo! God has been blessing us this month with his love. He has been giving us various love food and we have been enjoying the food that he has been giving us. And this morning he has prepared a special food for us that we are going to eat. And I believe we shall enjoy it in the mind of the Lord Jesus. We are looking at overcoming the enemies of God's love. God's love, as we know it in this church, is the agape love, isn't it? The agape love. As we can see in 1 John 4, verse 8, as well as 16. God's love. Unconditional love for every one of us. And the enemy know to where that as far as your love for God is established it will be difficult for him to overcome you because God will always protect you so the enemy is out to
to reduce your love, to quench your love, to ensure that the love does not even take birth. That is what is out. And the enemy, which we all know, Satan the devil, is out to ensure that the crown of life that awaits you, you don't take delivery of it. As my fault, he wants you to fail the examination of love. He does not want you to pass the love test that God will give to you. And even he will come with various temptations to see that your love test, you fail it. Everyone is given a love examination. And you must pass that love examination when it comes. We are told in James 1 verse 2. It's accounted all joy when we are faced with what? Diverse temptations. Temptations are good. And we are told also in James that brethren, that we should be careful so that we don't lose the crown of life that await us. Let's look at the Bible. It's material. Go to James. Let's go to James and see. James 1. There's a crown of life that await us. And the enemy is out to steal it. He doesn't want us to have that crown of life. He will not succeed in the mind anymore. Jesus. Let the smart reader read 12 for us. James 1 verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation when he is tried. For he shall receive the crown of life. Who, which the Lord has promised to them that do what? Loved him. There is a crown of life. But that crown of life, you can only take delivery of it if you pass the love examination. In our previous sermon, we talked about the litmus test. We talked about the definition of love meter. We said love meter is what? We said the fear plus obedience level all over what? Time. How much you fear God? How much you obey God over time? Is your love matter? Is it increasing or decreasing? Some people love instead of waxing strong, they will be going low. They will be diminishing. Solomon loved the Lord. And he gave a thousand bond offering at Mount Gibwa. And God appeared unto Solomon. Solomon, ask of anything. I'm pleased with you. The same Solomon again. After a time and time. Solomon loved strange women. Solomon cannot resist strange women. His love for strange women was much. And he started following these women. Because some of them, they were goddesses. Some of them were princesses. And it's like following them to go and serve their idols. Knowing too well that God dislikes idol. God hates idol. God does not like it. And Solomon will be behind them, going small, small. The woman will say, come. Follow me. If truly you love me, follow me. I want to go and serve my God. Solomon will stay behind. Say, go on, I'm coming. Knowing too well is not good. But because of the love of the woman. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon defined love. He said, love is as strong as death. He looked at God. He looked at the woman. I love this woman. I cannot offend her. But I can find God. He was offending God. He was not offending the woman. Solomon loved strange women. And the woman stole his heart. And his love meter began to diminish. Begin to go down. Yes. 
The same for Saul. Saul loved the Lord. Saul, God chose Saul to become the first king in Israel. When they wanted king. He gave them a very tall king. Saul was very handsome. He said the tallest. When he stood up, he was taller than every other man. And very handsome. He said, behold, this is your king. And everybody looked at Saul. They loved Saul. Saul loved God. Of course, the spirit of God was already upon him. Samuel has anointed him king. The spirit of God was upon him. But what happened to Saul? Saul that feared God. Saul that obeyed God. Saul fear began to diminish over time. Saul love, uh, obedience begin to. And what happened? He did not obey God. Absolutely. Partial obedience. He obeyed some, he did not obey some. He said he was afraid of the people. So he was afraid of the people more than God. And it came to a point Saul love became so low that Saul can command that they should kill the, the priest of God. 85 priests, men of God, were in effort. So I asked them to come. And Abiata's father was there, all of them. Say, you help David? My, uh, David? See, because they gave David food and they assisted David. He wanted to kill David. And he ordered that they should kill all the men of God. He told his soldiers to kill the men. The soldiers said, no, we cannot. These are men of God. We cannot kill them. Ah, don't lay hands on a man of God. No, we can't do that. And one greedy one that was there, one greedy person said, I will do it. He said, who will do it? I will promote the person. And thank God for Abiata. Abiata took the effort and ran away. And outside Saul lost it. There was no effort again. Nothing, no priest to help him to inquire of God. No little one that you saw him, he went to which of Edom. <laughs> you have killed all the priests. So who is going to inquire of God? Whereas Abiata ran to David and was carrying the effort. And that effort, David was using it. It was the effort they used to inquire of God. God would tell them, go. Don't go. Stay. Go and fight. Don't fight. Stay. Do this. God tell them what to do. And you saw the demise of Saul. What happened to Saul? Saul and Jonathan all died in the war. The war was too much for them. And they died. Their love went down. And that is what the enemy is out to do. The enemy knows too well that if your love is intact, ha, you are secured. If your love is there, solid for God, unshakable, like a solid rock, like the rock of Gibraltar, that nothing can withstand you. So the enemy will want to come and puncture that love. And this is what we'll be learning this morning. In the name of Jesus. How to overcome the enemies of God's love. That is what we are looking at this morning. You've heard of Abraham. Abraham was a man that loved God. Abraham was holy, righteous, and a good man. They call him the father of faith. He was very holy, righteous, and good. But God appeared to Abraham in a vision in Genesis 17. Let's see what God said to Abraham in Genesis 17 verse 1. This matter I will read for us. Genesis 17 verse 1. What did God say to Abraham? When Abraham was 90 and 9 years old, 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, the almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect Woo! was Abraham perfect Abraham was not perfect Abraham was a good man 
Abraham was holy. Abraham was righteous. Abraham was good. But Abraham was not perfect. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. God wants us to be perfect. He wants us to be perfect. And that was why he brought Jesus Christ. Because no man can be perfect without Jesus. We need Jesus to become perfect. He's the one that makes everything perfect. And this we can see if we go to uh, is it Colossians, Colossians 1, let the smart reader read 28 for us. Colossians 1, 28. 28, 29, year about. You see, it's the one that makes things to be perfect. Without Jesus, no perfection. Quickly, quickly, let's move. Colossians 1. Who will preach? Warning every man. And teaching every man. In all wisdom. That he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Thank you very much. You can stop there. You see, it is Jesus that presents people perfect. No one can be perfect without Jesus. It's presented. And we are in this world to come and be perfect. Every one of us want to be perfect. Abraham was a good man. Abraham was a holy man. Abraham was a righteous man. But God was telling him, Abraham, you need to be perfect. You need to be perfect. You need to be perfect. This was Genesis 17. Abraham was warning, uh, God was warning Abraham, telling him that he needed to be perfect. And in Genesis 22, from 17 to 22, God came to test Abraham with a love test. Let us mother read for us. Let's see. Genesis 22. God came to test Abraham. The promise he has promised Abraham, he has given Abraham what Abraham wanted. The beloved son, Isaac, has been born. Uh, now, see what God came to do. Read for us. Genesis 22, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son. Now listen, you know, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering. Upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. You see, God will send you an errand. He will not finish the message. He said you should go. He will not tell you where you get there. Imagine. He doesn't tell you the matter finished. It's like sending you to an address. He will not give you the address finish. So when you go to a so place, I will tell you where to go next. He said the land I will tell you. Continue. Yeah, you see, Abraham did not hesitate. Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his heart and two of his young men with him and Isaac and his son and cleave to the wood for the bond of ring and rose up. Yeah, we will not have time to read all of them. Just go quickly. Uh, go to nine. Read nine downwards. Be fast. As they were journeying, they were going. Abraham took his son and some men. He took his son Isaac, which God told him to sacrifice. They were going. They came to a place. The son asked him. Uh -huh. Where God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And where the, the, uh, the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son. And he laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called up to him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Verse 12. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the Lord. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou feared God. Seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. Thy only son. For me. Thank you. You will underline that verse 12. Very powerful. 
Now the story is an interesting one. We don't have time to begin to read. While they were going on the way, the son asked his father, Isaac. Uh, Isaac has his father. He said, Daddy, we have we are going for sacrifice. Where is the animal for sacrifice? This is not the first time they are doing sacrifice. Isaac is used to sacrifice. His father used to do sacrifice. He said, where is the animal for the sacrifice? And what did Abraham answer? He said, God will provide. <laughs> because he cannot tell the young man that it is you we want to use for the sacrifice. The boy will take off. <laughs> the boy will run away. Say, I don't want to die. He said, God will provide. And when he got there, you know, he now used to maybe tell the son, look at that thing. Ah, he catch his son and tie his hand and tie it. The son will say, Daddy, what is happening? Before you know, he has tied his son and put it. Ah, ah. Now me, what did I do you? <laughs> now me, why you stay do the sacrifice? The son will be wondering, what is going on? Abraham, first don't change. And God saw from heaven that this man, Abraham, the way his eye is looking, he wants to kill this boy now. He arranged the boy and carried the knife. Ah! He heard a voice from him say, Abraham, Abraham, do not touch that child. Don't do anything. <laughs> he said, now, I know you fear it, the Lord. Abraham passed the love test. The love test, he passed it. I know you fear it, the Lord. For this thing you have done. Did Abraham not fear God before? He fear God now. But he has to pass the test. So there is always a love test. If you are able to pass it. If you are not able to pass it, there is a problem. Abraham passed And because Abraham passed it, let's see what God said to him. The angel of the Lord now begin to swear. Begin to bless Abraham. You go to Go to 15. Read 15 for us. And the angel of God called Abraham out of heaven. The second time. And said. By myself I have sworn. Said the Lord. But because thou have done this thing. Thou hast not withheld thy son. Thy only son. That in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. Thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. That is Satan the devil. <laughs> and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou have obeyed my word. Thank you very much. If you want to quickly go back, let's go back and see when God promised Abraham. You see, God had promised Abraham backward. If you go backward, go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Go and see when he promised Abraham. Genesis 12. See when he promised Abraham. In Genesis 12, a smart reader will read 1 to 3 for us. Be very fast. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee. I will cause him that cause thee. And in thee, who, who, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Thank you very much. Now you see, in Genesis 12, the time God called Abraham for the first time, he told Abraham the vision, what will happen. That he's going to make Abraham great. Abraham will be a great nation. His name will be great. He will make Abraham a blessing. And through him, all the families of the earth will be blessed. He will bless, whosoever blesses Abraham, he will bless that person. Who calls Abraham, he will curse that person. You see that kind of thing? He told Abraham this. But he didn't tell Abraham there is going to be a love test. So. There was no, Abraham did not know of love tests. 
that was going to test him. You see it? And again he came to Abraham in Genesis 15. Let us read right Genesis 15. He came again to Abraham again in Genesis 15 to remind him, to tell him, to, to show Abraham, to reveal to Abraham. Genesis 15, read for us. Read uh, Genesis 15, read 5 and 6 for us. You can read one, read one and go to 5 and 6. Read one first. After this things, the word of the Lord came out to Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield. I am thy ceiling great reward. Now go to 5 and 6. Be fast. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted him to him for us. Thank you very much. You see it. Abraham, God, after he has promised Abraham in the beginning, after a time, he came to meet Abraham. And showed Abraham a vision. In that vision, there were many stars. He said, Abraham should count the stars. If he can count it. Abraham said, I can't count it. He cannot count it. He said, that is how your seed, your descendant will be. That thing I've told you initially, that is how it's going to be. And all of that. Abraham has not seen all those things, but Abraham believed God. And because God saw that Abraham believed, it was counted for him. God credited him that he's a righteous man. Abraham believed and he became righteous. God didn't tell him there was test though. This is just to believe. He became righteous because he believed. God showed him something, he believed. Now the time came, that promise, I'm going to give you a special son. That promise on the covenant son has been born. God want to test him. To see whether he's a selfish man. He said, come and sacrifice that covenant son to me. It's like you've been praying for financial breakthrough. That God should help you with money. God should do this for you. God should give you contract. God should make you this. And God is just looking at you. He said, this year, I'm going to surprise you. This year is your year of mighty power. I will surprise you. And God surprise you with that thing which you've been looking for. That thing which you have been asking for and he gave to you. After he has given to you, he said, now, come and give me back that thing. You begin to say, ah, uh, did I hear you well? Have you given some children things? You give them biscuit. Eh? You give a child biscuit. You now say, give me one. He will say, no. Ah, now let me give you the whole packet of biscuit. Give me one inside now. So I know I go, I, I can't give you that one now. I'm going to chop all of them. <laughs> when you look at that child. But some children, if you give them, they will carry it. They say, you should take it. And you take from inside. No, that child is a kind child. But the one that will say no. Sometimes the child is even having two or three. You say, give me one. He said, no, it will not be enough for me. <laughs> I want to eat the three. Look at that child very well. <laughs> you have work to do with that child. <laughs> because who is teaching that child at a very tender age? Where, where do you have that spirit from? I just gave you. I said, return back to me. You said, no way. <laughs> so God came to test Abraham with the child, the special child, Abraham was ready to sacrifice it to God. And when God saw it, ah, he said to his angel, the angel said, look, now God said that it is now he knows that you feared him. And because of that, he now blessed Abraham. He said, I bless him. I have been telling you of, it's established today. That thing I tell you of, today is established. He said, and it is true, you the whole world. You hear us singing, praising Abraham, blessing Samaya, all those songs and all of that. It is because any blessing you are seeing in this world is connected to Abraham. Abraham. Is, is Abraham not the father of Jesus? Are you getting it? So that's how it is. Everything is connected. It's connected to Abraham. Abraham blessing Samaya. So you see it. Now, Abraham was able to pass that love test. He did not fail. He passed. There was another man. They call him Job. You know Abraham was not perfect. 
What did God say concerning Job? Job was a perfect man. God said concerning Job. In Job 1 verse 1, God described Job. Let's read Job. Let's see. Job 1 and verse 8. You see it. Read 1 and 8. Job 1 verse 1 and 8. Let's see what God said concerning Job. There was a man in the land of Uz. Whose name was Job. Hayala. He said, and that man was perfect and upright. You see it? A one that feared God. And eschewed evil. He does not like evil. He hates evil. When you see somebody eschew evil, he hates evil. Remember Jesus? Hebrew 1 verse 8. He said, Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Continue. Go to 8. The Lord said unto Satan, I have now considered my servant Job that there is none like him in all the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feared God and destroyed evil. Thank you very much. Now, you can see Job was said to be perfect and upright. But what happened to Job? Job that was perfect and upright. <laughs> Now God was talking about Job to Satan. Look at what Satan answered uh, God. Let's go to where he answered God. He said, did Job serve you for nothing? Fear you for nothing? Um, if you are there, you, you show it to me. Verse 9, okay. Read it out. And Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for not? Has thou not made an edge about him? About his house. About all that he has. And all his side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand. And the substance is increased in the land. But put, put forth thy hand now. And cause all that he had. He will cause it to your face. Thank you very much. Now, Satan was challenging God. He said, Job is not just fearing you for nothing. Is it not because you are protecting him? He said, remove your, if you don't give him all these things, you think he will be fearing you. He said, put, remove your this thing. And because of that, God wanted to see if Job will still love him without all these things. And he now allowed Satan. Satan went and destroyed everything that Job had. Did Job fail? No. Job still went down and began to worship God. He said, naked I come, naked I go. I will still worship you. Hi! God was happy with Job. God was happy with Job. You see why God said Job was perfect, what a strong man. God was happy with Job. Even plus everything. He lost his wife, he lost everything, he lost his children. Lost his ten children. Three guys and seven boys. Lost everything. He still was worshipping God. Was remaining himself and his wife. Now. Job. Still worship. But this Job that is worshipping God. After a time. When the affliction was too much. Because God. Satan had told God. He said look. Flesh for flesh. This Job you see. Now yellow man. He like his skin. If you allow me to touch this, his body, make her teach him some lesson. He will do anything for this skin. This man loves his body well, well. Some people love their body so much. Say this yellow bubble, make her touch him. Now God say, eh. he said, touch him, but don't take his life. He said, no problem. And he gave Job well everywhere, 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 boy. Job cannot see that anywhere, <laughs> boy. Yeah, Satan is wicked. <laughs> Job was smelling all manners of things. And the wife looked at him and said, Look, cause God and die. What you can't suffer with this? Just who will cause God? He said, Don't talk like that, too. Woman, don't talk like that. Don't talk what you don't know. Don't talk like that. In all of this, but this time, Job has been affected. His friends came to worsen things. They said, Look, Job, we don't see. All the way you they do things, you'll be doing evil. All this you're wet. We don't see how you take it up. They begin to mock him. They begin to accuse him. That this kind of thing no go be happen to somebody if you are a good person. You are a bad person. Now the bad, bad way you they do, hand on meet you. 
<laughs> you know, when good, bad things happen to good people, you will now see how people begin to die. He called himself a man of God. If truly is a man of God, why can this problem be attacking him? Why is this thing happening to him now? If truly is a man of God, they will be talking to you anyhow. See now, this is happening to him. Eh? It's been six years. Eh? You hear people mouth. All those people that have bad mouth, they begin to. That was why his friends. And Job was there. Job was confused. Job said, no problem. He said, no, it is God that is punishing him. He said, this thing, ah, no, 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 no. That it is God that is dealing with him. And that was where God was annoyed. So who is this man? What are you saying? <laughs> God came to meet him. He said, who is this that back net counsel? Eh, am I the one doing you or Satan? You are not attacking Satan. You are coming to say this me. The Satan that is attacking you, instead of you to face Satan and fight Satan, you are saying it is me punishing you. How can I be punishing you? Eh? God was annoyed with Job. And Job said, ah, I'm sorry, sir. Now I repent. When Job repented, God went to his, son, his friends and all of that and told them, look, you people are very stupid. You've not talked well of me. Your prayer, I know the hearer. Go meet Job. Give him gifts. Let him pray away. Make I no kill all of you now. <laughs> so you see, Job suffered. But Job thought it was God punishing him. He didn't know it wasn't God. It was Satan. And that is how it does. A lot of people. Until enlightenment come, light come, you will not know. You will be thinking this problem. Ah, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? But you must have light about what is causing, what is the, where is this problem come? Every evil problem you see today, anything that is affecting a saint of God, the root cause is Satan the devil. Why? John 10, 10. The word of God said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief come to steal, to kill and destroy. He said, but I have come that they may do what? Have life and have it more and more abundantly. The ministry of Satan is to destroy. His target is to see that you are destroyed. That is what he's looking for. He will steal, he will kill and destroy. I asked God one time, I said, ah, why is it something somebody have uh, killed, they will not be destroyed. As if, if something is dead, is that not the end? No. They are not talking of physical death. There is life after death. Satan is not just interested in killing you in this world. Oh. He wants to destroy you in the world after. That is his focus. If you know it, he's a bad person. It's not a, it's a, it's very bad. And I say you, the scripture we selected, Revelation 12. If you read Revelation 12 and God can open your eyes of understanding and reveal the secret that is in that scripture to you, you will see what is going on there. Revelation 12. Right from the beginning. He said there was wonder in heaven. Serious wonder, as God has promised us, that this year, there is going to be mighty power on earth, this year for us, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. That was how there was wonder in heaven. After that wonder, he said, there was another wonder. Wherever God is, there is always wonder. Our God is a God of signs and wonder. Wherever he is, if he's in your life, he's, he's going to give you wonder. You'll be manifesting that wonder. And I pray for everyone here. We are going to manifest wonder this year. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every one of us who will showcase the mighty power of God. People shall see us and they will know that really God's power is with you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now if you look at that scripture, Revelation 12. Satan the dragon was out to destroy the woman and her son. But God helped her to escape. She escaped on an ego's wing. That story is happening in heaven. But it's happening today with us. Every one of us on earth here. You cannot make yourself escape, Satan. I've said time with a number that you, you cannot escape. Go and read the Bible. Every escape from the enemy, it is God that makes you to escape. If you look at that woman, it was God that came to help him to escape. She fled and was caught by God. God will help you. Because without God, we cannot. None of us here will be able to fight Satan. So you see it? It is God. And this year, God is helping us. Jesus. You know, this year is a great year. 
It's the year of enlightenment. And what Satan does not like is enlightenment. Satan likes darkness. That is his headquarter. If you go to the kingdom of hell, if you go where it belongs, the, his headquarter of his kingdom is darkness. He does not like light. He likes to walk in the darkness so that his evil deed will not be revealed. If you walk in the light, everything he's doing will come out. But God is light and walks in the light. So you see, so Satan does not like light to come. The word of God is light. Once the word of God is coming, he knows what the word of God can do. Psalm 119, verse 105. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So wherever there is the light of God, Satan does not like it. You saw in John 1, verse 5. He said, the light shined in the darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Satan will be confused. Ah, which can light be this? You saw Jesus. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from up. There was a great light that threw him down. And he's confused. So you see, so when the light of God starts to come, he knows. And that is why he says, Satan does not want the word of God to enter you. He always prevent you. You go to crusade, you go to where the word of God is coming. He will distract you. Your phone will feel ring. Somebody, he wants, because if the word of God comes to you, he knows what that word will do. When that word grow, woo! and that is why you see in Mark 4, uh, the parable of the swa, the swa that went to source it. Immediately the word entered that person. He knew to where, ah, this one don't succeed. Ah, he came quickly to collect the word. Let this matter read Mark 4, 15 for us. As the word hit the person, Satan come to steal the word. He doesn't want the word. He does it because he knows that that word, are you there? Yes. That, and these are there that fell by the wayside. Where the word is sown. When they have heard, Satan comment immediately and take it away the word. That was sown in their heart. Thank you very much. Why is Satan coming to take the word? Because he knows. Ah, this word, the word of truth, the word of salvation, if you know what he can do. The word of God, Hayalala, is the instrument, is the weapon of our transformation. The word is what transforms people, what changes people. He sent his word to Jacob, he lighted the only Israel. Job 33 30. He said to withdraw his soul from going down the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. It's the word of God. So he said, so when the word comes, ah, no, 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 remove that word, remove that word. So they must find a way of removing that word. But sometimes it is too late. The, lock, the, the word has already been planted. And once that word is planted, you see the person, that day is the day for the person conversion. The person will come and give his life to Christ. Ah, Satan says, hey, this one don't go. We don't lose this one, we don't lose this one. And I say, they say jubilation in heaven. When a sinner gives his life to Christ, you see the angels of heaven, they begin to jubilate. They are happy for that soul that has given his life to Christ. That is now, it's translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. You move from one kingdom to another kingdom. Ah, Satan says, we've lost that one. But Satan does not give up. You need to understand Satan. Satan doesn't give up easily. Is it? We can still get him back. We can still get him back. Let's try. Let's try. Let's try to get him. And then we go to plan B. Plan A has failed. We didn't want the word of truth to be planted. But this one, the word of truth has been planted. But let's. He has gotten salvation now. But we go. Let go and remove him. And how are they going to do this? Okay, we know what to do. God does not like sin. We can cause this man to sin. We can cause this man to do this. We can cause this man to begin to do this. They know what you will do that will make God not to be happy. They know. So they will start on you. They begin to work on you gradually. They begin to work on you gradually. They begin to work on you gradually. And that's why you see in church, when somebody gives his life to Christ, we want to follow up with them. If you don't follow up with them, Satan can take them back. A brother that you've seen that I've given life, you see him come back to his vomit and all those things and begin to do rubbish. Ah, not with his brother giving life to Christ that day. Because there was no follow up. You did not follow up. You saw Bishop David the other one. He said he went to do follow up. He was going to check a brother. That's when God. He was going to check a brother to do a follow up. 
There was need for a follow-up. You don't just leave people like, say he has given his life to Christ, it's okay. For we're okay. In this world that we are in, all the wicked people and all of that, Satan does not give up. He will still come. He has his strategy. And this morning we shall be exposing all his strategy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Are you ready for it? Yes. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now quickly, we want to look at, you see, knowledge is power. When you know the strategy of Satan, you will not be afraid of him. You will be able to overcome him in the name of the Lord Jesus. All you need is light. Once you have light about his actions and inactions, you'll be able to overcome him quickly. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, like I've said, I said, he will attack your love of God. He will attack it. Let's look at how he's going to do it. What Satan normally do. Number one. Satan is going to attack your love for God with the following means. Number one, he will first of all prevent you not to receive the love gift of God. That is salvation. The one we said first of all, John 3, 3, 3 to 6, 16 to 18. And how does he do it? 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. You are familiar with that scripture, Ephesians 2, 2. You know, Satan likes to blind the eyes, the minds of those that are in the world. The children of disobedience, so that they don't, the glorious gospel of Christ does not reflect in them. That is what Satan's like. Ephesians 2, verse 2, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. He's the God of this world. He's the one in charge of the people of darkness. He's the one. He goes about to make sure the glorious gospel of Christ does not come to their heart. So he does that by blinding them. But if by chance he came too late and the word has been planted. That person has received salvation. He goes to plan B. The plan B I was telling you of. Now what will he do? <laughs> He's out then to steal the love gift of salvation. And how is he going to do it? We'll look at it. Number two one. He will begin to make you not to fear God. You saw how Solomon. How Solomon loved strange women. And gradually the love of Solomon for God begins to dwindle. Because he loves strange women more than God. Number two. two that is two. Two, he will make you not to obey God. Number two, three, he will make you not to love God. Number two, four, he will make you not to believe God. Number two, five, he will make you not to have faith in God. Number two, six, he will make you not to trust God. Woo! All these things I have just said is number two. This is how Satan tried to steal your salvation. He looked at you. Hey, this one don't succeed though. Okay, I know I will get him. Let me do things to make him not to love God. Let me do things to make him not to fear God. Let me do things to make him not to trust God. Let me do things to make him not to believe God. Let him do things not to make him trust God. All of this I've just mentioned. If he can. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. He said, cause be any man that trusts in man that consider flesh as his arm. Once Satan can make you not to trust God and you trust man, you begin to think, I have one Godfather. I have one person that will help me. I have this. You begin to look unto man instead of looking unto God. He's getting you gradually. He's catching you. See, he makes you to commit sin. You begin to go and do sin. You begin to like sin. Instead of you to hate sin. You begin to say, yes, continue. My, my, go, my brother, my sister, continue. He's happy. He's encouraging you. Are you seeing it? Instead of you to hate sin, you begin to like sin. He's encouraging you. So these six things he will do all to make you if he can get you off the salvation. The salvation that you have received. The gift that you have gotten. He will try to steal it from you. We pray our God he will not succeed in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you have that light, you will not let him succeed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, scriptures for that. You remember the word of God says, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. When you gave your life to Christ, that's the spirit God gave you. You are fearless. Also, you remember Jeremiah 17 verse 5. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Now, we go to number 3. Satan is out to kill you. Ensure that you, you don't die in Christ. People are dying every day. Isn't it? And the greatest joy of Satan is when somebody dies 
and that person did not die in Christ. You see him, they'll be holding their meeting, dancing. He don't die. He don't die. He don't die in Christ. He don't die. That is, this person died outside Christ. The person did not die in Christ. He did, which means he does not have the spirit of Christ in him. He died. The man died. People die every day. So whenever somebody died and he did not die in Christ, because those that die in Christ, what will happen? They will resurrect. They've lost that one. So they are quick. And that is why Satan likes to attack you in the day of your sin. In the day things are not good with you. You saw the day he went to attack the children of uh, Job when they were partying. The Bible says, the day they were partying, doing party. And you know, after partying, the father usually sanctified them. He did not come after sanctification. He came during the party. Maybe they were drinking hot, drinking all manner of things, doing nonsense. He said, this is the time to kill them. Let's get them now. Kill them, kill them, quick, quick. No, 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 no. He caught them. In the day they were partying. They were not spiritually alert. They were not sanctified. He got them when they were not prepared. And that is why you see the Bible says, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. You have to be awake. You have to be alert as a Christian. You have to be spiritually alert. Because Satan is looking at you at your weak moment. When you are not watching. When you are not, he will just come. And if you can die that day, you will be very happy. So you see it. So that is why you must always check yourself. You must know. If I die now, where am I going to? Am I ready? If today is my day today, am I ready? So every day you check, are you holy? Are you righteous? Are you good? So if you know you are holy, you are righteous, you are good, you are not afraid. And as I say, Christians are not afraid of death. You hear Apostle Paul. He said, look, for me to die is gain. This is a man that is prepared. This is a man that is ready. Are you getting it? He's not afraid. So you see, Satan don't want to kill a man that is, that is in Christ. That you think they don't know. They know. When they see you, say, no, leave that, leave that one. We'll catch him when he has left Christ. This man is so strong in Christ. We'll leave him. Leave him. Yeah? Leave him. When he's no longer, we'll go to him. And that is always a man of God. Something happened to a man of God. An evil thing. Ah! Why people will be busy castigating him and all of that. Say, look, this man has done bad. Ah! A pastor, he has impregnated somebody. Everybody will be laughing and all of that. You see, Satan will come nearby. Yeah, you've done well. Don't mind them. You've done well. Hey, you've done well. Our oh, man. Hey. They'll be yelling. <laughs> don't mind them. Don't mind them. We are for you. We are for you. <laughs> you've done well. Ah, do another one again. Do another one. <laughs> so, do another one. They'll be encouraging. <laughs> you understand? That is why Christians, if you are allowed, when bad things happen to good people, pray for them. A man of God has fallen. Pray. Begin to intercede for him. Begin to pray for him because he's a human being. You understand? When something happens, your brother, something happens, begin to pray. You begin to pray. That one person die. Uh -huh. You now only one, they want make it die. They want make many die. Satan thinks now only one in the look for. <laughs> yeah. So when you are spiritually conscious, you know. I told you the man that had accident by the bridge there. That is very good, some assorted. And this man came out and began to jubilate, thanking God. He said, Father, I thank you they did not get me. Father, I thank you they did not get me. If you come there, you cannot even tell the man, to, uh, sorry. When you look at the car, total. But this man, I got there, I said, we. Oui. The man, his action and everything ministered to me. I left quietly to my car. I said, this man is a great man of God. This man is a dangerous man. Look at calves, scattered pieces, everything, total. But this man, he knelt down, he said, Father, I thank you. They did not get me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ha -ha. People got everybody were looking at this. We are watching him. I just advised myself. I said, This man, he have serious understanding. But the, uh, the canal man we say, car don't scatter, car. They don't get you now. Your car don't scatter. He said that out for car. Satan a car in the loop. He needs that man. He wants to destroy that man. He wants to kill the man. But the man understood that he escaped. He escaped. That God rescued him. He have understanding that God rescued him. So he is thanking his father. He is thanking God. He said, they did not get me. Thank you, God. Thank you. I give you glory. Ha. Everybody will begin to go one by one. Where everybody left. And I cannot forget that, that incident for life. Because that thing ministered to me. There are things that minister to you. You don't even need preaching. You just saw it. The thing will tell you something. <laughs> oh, let me. I, from there, I was driving to church. We have service that day. I said, God, now, well, people, they will. 
I said, that man is a strong man. He's a strong man. But if you don't know who, say, hey, car don't destroy. Car don't. Now, Satan never seen fine car before. <laughs> if you know Satan, very evil. He loves evil. Evil, sweet. He said that Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated evil. Satan loved evil. He enjoyed it. When people are destroyed, he will laugh. Ha, 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 yeah. Let it die. Let it die, my people. <laughs> he enjoys it. We pray God help us in the mind. Tell about Jesus. Now we go to number four. Destroy your soul. You see now, I said number three is how to kill you. But when, it's not just, it's how to kill you. It's not satisfied. I've done one, I've done two, I've done three. I'm in number four. I'm number four. To destroy you in hell. That is his target. His target is to destroy you in hell. But he will not succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. None of us here will be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God will watch over us. He will prepare us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now quickly, let's look at the strategy which we are going to use. Because there is a strategy on how you will overcome Satan in the mighty name of Jesus. Number one strategy, what you must do. How to overcome the enemies of love, of uh, those that love God. Number one, you must have the fear of God in your heart. Isaiah 11 verse 1 to 4. You must have the fear of God intact in your heart. Nothing should make you not to fear God. But when we talk of this fear of God, people will say, I fear God. It's a lie. If you fear God, the proof that you fear God is that you obey God. Anyone that does not obey God does not fear God. Are you getting it? Once you do not obey God, you do not fear God. If you fear God, you will obey him. You cannot say you fear God and you do not obey him. The same thing for love. You cannot claim you love God and you are disobeying God. So you see it? Love and uh, obedience and fear, they go together. And that's why we say the definition for love, love matter. If you want to look at love, if, if it's a physics, they'll say speed. Speed is distance covered over time. That is how to find speed. Distance, the same thing, love meter. The love meter of God is the fear of God and obedience level all over time. So once your fear is not there, you will not obey. Any person that does not fear God does not obey God. Saul did not fear God and that's why he didn't obey God. If you fear, you will obey. Are you getting it? And with time, we know. You see, Abraham obeyed God in Genesis 12. Eh? In Genesis 22, verse 12. Abraham obeyed God, but God said, you fear me. Is it not obedience to you? He obeyed God, but God looked at it as fear. You fear, that's why you obey. So you see, we must be careful. We cannot be saying we, are, we fear God, I will be doing nonsense. If you, you must fear God, in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. Every one of us. And you cannot fear God if you don't have the spirit of fear. That's why I told you Isaiah 11 from 1 to 3. He said the spirit of the fear of God will be upon you. It will rest upon you. That will give you quick understanding in the fear of God. In Jesus mighty name. Number two. You have to love God. You must love unto death. 2 Corinthians 5 14 to 17. You know that scripture? John 14 21 to 23. Love unto death. Number three, you use the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, verse 11. Number four, you always testify about the goodness of God. The word of your testimony, Revelation 12, 11. Number five, you have to have an overcomer's faith. Hebrew 12, 2, 1 John 5, 4. He said, whosoever is born of God overcome the world. This is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith. Your faith must be strong in God. And the last one, number six. You have to overcome by prayer and fasting with glorification. Now, why do we have number six, which is the last one? <laughs> in all you do, everything you do in this world, without prayer and fasting, it will be difficult. Prayer and fasting is essential. If Jesus Christ himself was always praying and fasting, is it you that will not pray and fast? So is it? 
The business of Christianity, prayer and fasting is essential. Because what does what do prayer uh, do for you? Prayer keeps your relationship with God intact. You are communicating with God and you are hearing from God. That is what prayer does. Then fasting helps to sanctify you. When you fast and all of that, it gives you divine direction. It shows you which way to go. When you are confused, you don't know whether to go left or to go right. You fast. Give yourself a Afflict yourself, in fact. You remember them in Ezra. In Ezra 8, 21. They fasted for three days. They needed to know which way to go. And after they have fasted for three days, God showed them the right way to go. So you see it. So it is essential. Now we must glorify God. You cannot overcome Satan without being somebody that glorifies God all the time. You must be someone that glorifies God. Because the kingdom of God operates in the uh, law of uh, reciprocity. You glory, God will glory you and you will glory God. You must glorify God always in the mind of the name of Jesus. Everything you do must be unto God. You remember Jesus in John 17, Jesus Christ said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son so that your son will glorify. As your son have glorified you on earth, everything Jesus Christ did on earth, who, he said, who did it? God. He said it is not him doing it. He gave all the credit to God. He said it is his father that is it. This thing is not me doing it. It's my father that is doing it. That is, you are giving honor to your father. And God is a jealous God. Isaiah 42 verse 8. He said, look, my glory will I not share with another. God does not share his glory with any other person. So you must give him glory. You must honor him. You must do all of this. Now, in closing, God is already set. Are you getting it? For this year, he is set to give us his mighty power, every one of us. But what he said we should do is for us to be enlightened with the light of the living. This morning we have been enlightened. We now know the strategy of Satan. We know what to do. Are you getting it? You are not supposed to be afraid of Satan. You know his tricks. You know his antics. Are you getting it? So what are you supposed to guard? You guard your love jealously. You don't play, play with your love. And this is what Apostle Paul knew. And that is why you see in Romans, in closing, in Romans 8, verse 35, you saw Apostle Paul. He gave a great right up there. Let somebody read it as we close. Romans 8, 35. He said, what can separate us from the love of Christ? <laughs> what if he separate me from the love of Christ? You have to come to that point. Nothing. Romans 8, 35 downwards. Yes. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, is it temptation? Or distress? Is it, uh, uh, suffer, I call it suffer. Distress. Or persecution. Or famine, I say famine, no food. Uh, things that are difficult. Uh -huh. Or nakedness. Or peril. Or sorrow. You know, son, somebody can choke you now. It's going to stab you. Now that will come make you stop to follow Jesus. Uh -huh. As it is written. For thy sake. We are key all day long. Hold on there. And that is why you see I've always advocated. I've said time without number. That's. Look, Christianity is a suicide mission in Christ. Your love for Christ is unto death. If I die, let me die. If I perish, let me perish. I must be with Christ. You see it? You don't, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Because to love Christ is your life. This was what Moses was trying to inculcate in their head. Moses gathered the children of Israel. In Genesis, if you go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19 and 20. He gathered all of them. He said, look, make I tell you now something. You need to understand. He said, I call heaven this day to be a record between me and you people. Eh? He said, God has set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. He said, but advice you now. Choose life that ye may live. They still do not understand what he said. He went to 20 to explain himself. In verse 20. He said, obey the commandment of God. Obey the laws of God. Cleave to it. Be bonded with it. Be joined with it. Be covenanted with it. He said, because he is the life. The length of your days. How long you go live for this world. Your pilgrimage on earth here is dependent on him. He said, because he is the life. That was when I got the revelation that Jesus is our life Lord. You know, you get landlord. 
in the life, Lord. He said, because he is the life. Are you getting it? So when you have that understanding, for you to live is Jesus. For you to die is Jesus. That is what Apostle Paul is saying there. And when Satan sees you, you are that kind of state. He's afraid that this kind of man is a dangerous man. They don't hear you because you are a transformer. When they see you, you this kind, they love this one half. And that was what they used to fight. The, when the, the, the angels of God and the angels of Satan and love that, they are used to battle. But the angels of God, they change tactics. Angel Michael, Angel Gabriel, and all that. If you look at that wall at Revelation, they said there was wonder. They changed their tactics. Revelation 12, verse 11, you saw it there. He said, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Eh? And by the word of their testimonies, they begin to speak the word of God. That look, Jesus has overcome you. Jesus has overcome you. They begin to use the word, of, the, their testimony to defeat Satan. And the last one which Satan was confused about, he said they love not their life unto death. That is a suicide mission. If we die, let us die. If we perish, let us die. Look, the, the, the greatest person to fight eh, is a suicide person. It's very dangerous. No person say you want to go fight a suicide person. It's dangerous. Because the person wants to die. I've told you several. Somebody, you will not want to die. He won't die. He just wants to near you say, let's die together. Let's die together. That's why people run away from suicide mission. If he enter a bus, he just enter a bus. He just say, yeah, let all of us die together in this bus. <laughs> you know he enter where people they let all of us die together. You are not prepared to die yet. He say, let's die. Let's die. So that kind of person is dangerous. That was how the angels they fought. So Satan and his God, they are not used to that kind of fight. Who, which can fight be this? <laughs> they took off. <laughs> they took off. And they fell from up like light. When they got down, they said, where are we now? Where are we? Ah! <laughs> they were annoyed. And they closed heaven. They said there was no place found in heaven for them. That was how they were able to do it. And when they from heaven, they looked down. They say, oh, inhabitants of earth. That Satan has been let loose. They say, Whoa, but salvation has come to heaven. They begin to deliver heaven. And they feel sorry for us. They say, Oh, I don't suffer. <laughs> so we have to overcome with their tactics. The technique they use is the same way we are going to use to overcome Satan. So if you have light about how they did it, you can replicate it. You can do it. If you believe that, jump off your seat. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, King of Glory.